Meghan Markle's plans to run for US Senate exposed. It's no secret that the world feels a certain way about the former Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle. You either love this woman or you hate her. Well, that debate may be continuing for the foreseeable future. It was recently announced that Meghan may be in line to replace Dianne Feinstein as Senator of California. Over the years, Meghan has never hidden her left-leaning political beliefs and that she is confident that women can change the world. So, when you think about her name being added to the list of Hollywood politicians, it's not that far-fetched. A major Democratic donor who is close to California Governor Gavin Newsom is tasked with deciding who will replace the late, great Feinstein. He told several outlets that Meghan was definitely a long shot, but in the craziness that is US politics these days, it's not impossible. Crazier things have happened, like the Terminator being a guy who used to have Gavin's job. Feinstein passing away has created a unique situation where the governor is the overseer. He is the man in charge of picking the replacement. In fact, Gavin is considered a presidential frontrunner for the next election. So how does Meghan play into all of this? Well, at the time of Feinstein's passing, Meghan had been networking among senior Democrats with a view to build a grassroots campaign to fuel her political ambitions, with the US presidency being Meghan's ultimate goal. This was confirmed by a senior Labour Party member who wished to remain anonymous to news outlets. That's right, Meghan's goal is to be the president of the the United States. Now, I try to remind myself that the host of Celebrity Apprentice was also the president for a while, and again, the Terminator was once the governor of California, but the idea of Meghan Markle being the president is just kind of out of nowhere. The source who revealed the information also shared that Harry and Meghan had partaken in an hour-long virtual meeting with Governor Newsom, but that he ultimately chose a different candidate. Her political campaign started and ended right there. Just boop! Nothing. The source claimed that Governor Newsom had vowed to replace Feinstein with someone who had experience and that it held a high level position in a similar field. The issue with that is that all of his possible candidates right now have already announced that they're running against him in the next election. This isn't the first time Meghan has tried to get into politics. She's obviously, you know, married to Prince Harry, who was a member of the royal family. Is he still? I don't really know that situation well. But it turns out that she has been trying to campaign herself for a government position since the moment she left the royals for good. Ever since she landed in the United States, it's been her sole ambition to be a political figure outside of the royal family, and she's been taking notes from Donald Trump. In the past few years, Meghan has attempted two more or two passions into one, which are politics and media content. Not only is there a documentary surrounding herself and Harry, but she has taken every opportunity that she can to exploit family secrets and take her 15 minutes of fame as far as she can. And 20 2021, herself and Harry sat down with Oprah Winfrey to air out every single piece of dirty laundry that's ever been left in the hamper. Of course, the royal family does not appreciate their secrets being shared with the world, so not only were they blacklisted by them from ever returning to the palace, but the interview kind of soiled their reputations as good people. Same with their documentary. A lot of people who saw it agreed that the footage painted the Duke and Duchess in a very terrible light, but of course that's not the only media-based venture that the these two have attempted to get off the ground. Only a few months after announcing their exit from the Royals, Meghan announced that herself and Harry had signed a multi-year deal with Spotify to produce a podcast. They claimed that the show was designed to help build a community through shared experience, narratives, and value. Their announcement did not include how much the couple were actually going to be paid for the contract, which ended up being, you know, a little modest $20 million, just your average paycheck. However, from the moment that this thing got off the ground, Spotify had grown reportedly frustrated with the couple's content and lack of productivity. According to executives at Spotify, the couple were taking way too long to actually like build a team to produce their episodes. There wasn't even a real structure to how the thing was going to be recorded, you know? Six months later, they produced one 33-minute holiday special, six months for 33 minutes of chit-chat, and many people started to question what was actually going on with these people behind the scenes. In fact, the 33 minutes included guests like Elton John, Deepak Chopra, Stacey Abrams, and a ton of other people. So like, why not just sit down with each and every one of those people for one hour and do that? Like, I would listen to that. Nothing came after this episode for almost an entire year, but eventually they hired an audio lead and things started getting smooth. Several people denied her request to join the podcast, however. I will mention Taylor Swift in a moment, but despite releasing regular episodes, the team posted on social media claiming that all the credit 
that it should go to the underpaid and undervalued producers. Spotify eventually decided to cancel her show for a few reasons, mainly that they spent you know, like a year not doing anything. Despite the success that the show eventually received, however, Megan was canned for good. Now, despite the public shame being brought upon her, this woman actually has a long history of being rude and unpresidential all the time. According to former employees that were unfortunate enough to, you know, work for Megan while still living with the royal family, Megan had a bit of a temper, especially when it comes to, you know, the people who were there to make her life easy. According to one caterer, Megan and himself got into a heated debate about her vegan food that was being delivered to her wedding. Megan was in the middle of tasting a couple of dishes for the big day when she suddenly started to get just super angry. And according to royal expert Katie Nicole, she was told by a source that Megan tasted an egg in her dish that led to a very tense moment. According to that source, the queen actually had to calm Megan down and told her that they did not speak to people that way in this family. The moment was recounted in the book The New Royals and several other former employees have shared their time with Megan and it's just as bad. An industry videographer who worked closely with Meghan Markle before she met the prince revealed that she was already called princess in her Hollywood days for her difficult and demanding behavior on set. According to the cameraman, Meghan was known to bring large entourages on set and laid down a strict set of rules for everyone involved with the production. The biggest and weirdest one was super specific was just do not shoot her feet. Big no-no for Meghan for some reason. Her feet became a hot topic of conversation after she took off her shoes during a royal tour in New Zealand in 2018, revealing what a lot of people thought was a scar from a bunion removal operation, but, but I'm not sure why anyone actually focused on that. It became apparent to the cameraman and the rest of the crew that she despised her own feet. Do not look, do not touch, do, we're not getting into what you can't do to the feet. Another man, a photographer, backed this story up by recounting a photo shoot that took place in 2015. Megan was reportedly in tent and turned up with an entourage, 12 people strong. The photographer who wished to remain anonymous said that they were warned about Megan's behavior. Apparently she showed up in disguise all the time and from the moment that she would enter the set, her attitude and demeanor was just straight up rude. And who could forget when the Duchess of Sussex was greeting mourners stationed outside of Windsor Castle on September 10th with her husband Prince Harry and the Prince and Princess of Wales. When an incident unfolded in footage that was wildly shared on Twitter, aka X now, Megan could be seen holding a bunch of pink roses and talking to a crowd when an aide speaks from behind her. The Duchess can be seen whirling around quickly with what a lot of people claim to be in a, just a really annoyed face. Megan spoke to the aide for a moment, pointing and waggling about, and then she snaps back, smiles, and nods like nothing happened. While of course there was never any word on what exactly was said in this exchange or why she said it in such a you know snappy way, according to one freelance journalists who claimed to be there, they shed light on the conversation that took place. Apparently Megan just didn't want to hand over flowers to anybody and that was it. It was as simple as that. Her attitude and overall persona has led to several A-list stars leaving her off of the guest list and publicly bashing the Duchess despite being their friends for a long time. For instance, Sir Elton John is one of the biggest names in pop rock history, so it's no surprise that he likes to throw a party or two with a lot of his A-list buddies. But this year he decided to throw an Oscars after party at his home where the prince and princess would normally be in attendance or at least you know stop by to say hello but in fact up until this past year the two were quite close reportedly spending a lot of free time together apparently something changed when they left the family they started slow you know get things started to get sour and a little bit of a rift began to split between them this year it hasn't been confirmed why Harry and Meghan were not at the party but a lot of people believe they snubbed Elton John and denied his invite to his face but according to a lot of celebrities who were there that night Everyone deemed them nobodies for missing the event, with a lot of people claiming that it was actually Elton who told them not to come. So Megan was left confused while Elton was just living it up with everybody. Like him and Lady Gaga, that's cool, they're in the same room. And of course, Taylor Swift, who reportedly declined to be a guest on Meghan Markle's now cancelled podcast. Megan wished to get Taylor involved in an interview with herself and Harry, and she even sent a handwritten invitation to her front door. According to her publicist, the invite was declined due to Taylor Taylor being smart and not wanting to be involved in that conversation or anything involved with political issues. When she is asked about the situation by fans or on her live tour, she claims that the whole thing is just blown out of proportions and that Harry and Meghan need to clear things up on their end. This was around the same time that the couple were facing issues with getting their documentary off the ground as well, so the can 
cancellation of the podcast, the documentary, everybody was just very stressed out at the time. So if anyone is attending her era's tour at the moment, just hold up some signs with Meghan's face on it and see what happens. Maybe Taylor has laser eyes we don't know about. Will Meghan Markle make her way to the US Senate? And will she be the next president of the United States? Probably not. But until the next update, thank you for stopping beyond the screen today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please drop a like if you had fun to show support and let us know what celebrities you want to see us cover. Oh, 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 oh,